More recently, the images uh, from the James Webb telescope were used by internet skeptics to have disproven the Big Bang. Uh, what do you make of such attempts? And do these claims hold any evidential weight? Uh, the, the, let's dispatch with the James Webb um, um, concern right away. I have an article posted at the Daily Wired and also on my website uh, addressing the alleged claim that, or the, the claim alleged that the, uh, uh, alleging that the, the images from the James Webb undermined the Big Bang uh, cosmology and the idea of an expanding universe. In fact, the opposite is true. And what the what's going on there is that a single researcher named Eric Lerner, who is an independent researcher, he doesn't have a PhD in physics, uh, but he's done a lot of work advancing uh, an alternative cosmology he calls plasma cosmology. Has He's been writing skeptical things about the Big Bang since the 1990s. He had a book called The Big Bang Never Happened. And he seized on some interesting anomalies uh, I as far as our ideas about galaxy formation. It seems that the, there were more galaxies uh, in the very, very most ancient time period of the universe that the James Webb has been able to detect than we would have expected. Now, it turns out that what he's doing is conflating ch a challenge to galaxy formation with a challenge to the expanding universe because the James Webb actually has detected the very long wavelength uh, infrared radiation that would be expected um, if the universe had expanded as much as, it as the Big Bang Theory would expect during that very long time period from the earliest part of the universe till now. Backing up, um, we, we first learned about the expanding universe because of light coming from distant galaxies that was stretched out. The scientists, the astrophysicists call that red shift. Shine light through a prism, it separates into red to violet. The red light has longer wavelengths, the violet to blue, shorter wavelengths. If an object is receding from us, then the, wa wa the wavelength of light will, will stretch out and will look redder than it would otherwise look in spectrographic analysis. Um, that's what was found of, of nearly all the galaxies that we observed in all quadrants of the night sky, redshift, suggesting an expanding universe outward roughly in a roughly spherical, roughly spherical way. Now that's that observation is held up not only from the first observations that were made at, with Hubble's 100 inch telescope that he worked with at the Palomar Observatory in the 1920s, but with images from the, Hub the later Hubble telescope that was built in his honor and, and the Spitzer telescope. Uh, so what the James Webb is able to do is to look yet further out in space and farther back into time to look at what galaxies would have looked like in the very earliest uh, period of the universe after the Big Bang. And it has in fact found such galaxies and it has, and as best we can tell to this point, well, the light coming from those galaxies is super stretched out. It's, I, I've called it uber red shifted. It's into the infrared range. And the reason that this has to be the case, this is obviously the case because the James Webb telescope was built to detect such infrared radiation that there are any galaxies of that age to talk about shows that the James Webb has detected galaxies with the kind of radiation that we would expect to be coming from such very, very distant, very old objects. It only can detect these the super old, or the, the, it's, it, it's detecting this infrared radiation and using that radiation to uh, synthesize images of very ancient galaxies. And the very fact that it's able to do that is showing us that we're getting the kind of radiation that we would expect based on the idea of an expanding universe outward from a beginning, i.e. the Big Bang Theory. Now, Lerner recognizes that, but he tries to explain that radiation away with a, with a, a discredited idea known as the tired light hypothesis. And I explain in the article why that idea has been discredited. So he actually acknowledges the evidence that on its face supports expansion of the universe, but he 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 shunts that aside and then confuses the issue of galaxy formation and the issue of evidence that would confirm an expanding universe. And what the evidence we have might challenge our theories of galaxy formation. It doesn't challenge our ideas about the, or, the expansion of the universe. 